Hey, my name is Jeremiah Craig, and I'm with Carpenter's Workshop, a small group leader. And I'm here to give a testimony of the goodness of God, how God showed up and his word worked in the life of my small group member concerning a court case where he was facing 40 plus years if he was found guilty or convicted. But standing on the word of God, the case ended up being dismissed. So to start off the story, um, a few weeks prior, we got to reach out from my small group member and he was telling me that he needed me to stand with him in uh, the court case that's going on. He didn't go into too much detail, but I really found out the details when we showed up a few weeks later up to the first court date. The court case was pretty serious. 42 years of your life, that means he, when he get out, that he would be an old man in his 80s, but by the grace of God, that case was dismissed. But this is how it transpired. Um, day one, we showed up. We showed up, prayed up even before we even came to the court case. But we was hearing the stuff and we were seeing um, how it is to be uh, represented by public defenders. And that taught us something like, if you're going in court, do what you can to get you a lawyer, a paid lawyer, because a public defender, they're just there to fulfill their duties to the state. And um, so the case went on all the way until Wednesday and the pr public defenders going back and forth arguing about the case. And they had subpoenaed my wife to even go up there to give a testament of my small group member of character because she knew him the longest and even me meeting him is through her. So when she went up to even give the testament of his character, the public defenders didn't even ask questions to attest to my small group member character. It was just shallow questions of how do you know him? How long do you know him? Um, and they asked one more question. It was like three questions. So when she came off the stands, she's whispering in my ear. She said, this has done nothing to help his case or to help him. But we knew that the ultimate help was Jesus and his word. And that's what we had locked our faith in on and was standing on. So all throughout the case, every time they would have a break, we would all go out to the hallway to this corner of the courtroom and we would just pray praying in tongues we didn't know what we was praying for but as we was praying we was issuing some decrees and declarations according to God's word concerning this case so it came to Wednesday when the jury went back and uh, was going to make their decision but so the public defenders came out to us as we was praying and told my small group member like, hey, in the next five to 15 minutes, the jury should have their case um, settled and a decision to be made. And he said it with such a sad and appearance that it really like angered me in the inside because being there all those days, I know that the public defenders did not put their best foot forward and um, did not help them at all. And I'm not even a student of the law, and I know that. But it came about that um, from the time the jury went in the room to make their decision, that's when I seen the hand of God start to go to work. Um, I think they went in at around 1 o'clock p.m. They went in, and like I said before, the public defender came out and said, five to 15 minutes so meaning by 1 15 they was expecting the jury to have a decision that's how much that i knew that the public defender knew that his clients was at the odds because if you feel like you presented a strong case you would know that the jury gonna come and it's gonna take a longer time for them to come to a decision but to the glory of god the jury did not make a decision that day and the whole time from 1 o'clock to 6 p.m. while the jury in there making um, their decision, well, trying to make their decision, we was all out there praying. The judge called everybody back in around 6 p.m. and told us 
hey, the jury could not make a decision. But this when the hand of God actually started moving also too. The head prosecutor, she has a 97.6 conviction rate. She rarely loses. And um, she was furious that they couldn't even make a decision. But then she told the judge that, hey, I'm not going to be in town. I did not tell you this at the start of this case because I did not know that it was going to linger this long for them to make a decision. But I'm not going to be in town the rest of the week. I'm going on vacation. My assistant going to have to fill in for me. That's one. When have you ever heard a prosecutor go out of town on a good case, on a big case like this? Then for two, um, as we started up the next day, the same thing happened. The jury, they come in that morning, they go back, start the whole time, they're back there making their decision, trying to make a decision. We're outside praying for hours, for hours. Um, I'm, I'm texting pastor, keeping him updated with the case. As one um, scripture pastor sent me, it really even boosted up my faith too. My faith also, he sent um, Ezekiel, um, 2127 it said overturn 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 i will make it right unto him so i knew then that the atomic bomb has been dropped like there's no way that this case would not be dismissed and at the time my small group member he was looking at the faces of the jury but me and my wife we would encourage them and tell them look we're not looking at anything in the natural we're not looking at what we see in the natural. We got our we got our faith locked in on God's word and what the word said. So then I, I decreed what Pastor has wrote and texted me. I spoke that God's word as we was praying. Every day I walked in the courtroom, me and my wife said, we come in the name of the Lord of hosts. We know we can't fight this battle, but we're going to battle with God's word. And we locked our faith in on what God, gonna, God, his word can't return to him void. But that Thursday, um, as the assistant prosecutors is up there filling in for the main prosecutor, um, the jury still cannot come to a verdict. But that Thursday, the executive vice president of Ross was one of the persons that was on the jury. So the VP of Ross was saying that she has to fly to New York um, the next day. So she's not going to be able to be there. So when she said that, it's like it triggered something in other people. They was like, look, y'all did not tell us we was going to be here all this week. Um, we had to find provisions for our kids and everything. All kind of excuses started coming up. Um, as I'm sitting here listening to this, on day, I, me and my wife looking at each other. I know she was thinking the same thing. I was thinking like, wow, the hand of God is really working. Um, so even that Thursday, they cannot come out to a decision. But that Friday, um, as we start, the assistant um, prosecutor, he's fumbling over paperwork. Stuff is getting mixed up. He's getting confused in all kind of ways. And um, we're still out there praying. We're still out there praying. So the prosecutors coming out, telling us throughout, I mean, the public defenders coming out, telling us through all the breaks that, hey, this was going on. No decision is still made. So my small group member, I see life coming back in here. He's seeing like the hand of God is working. The case went over to Monday. Friday still was no decision made. And the judge was getting agitated. The assistant prosecutor was getting agitated. Um, and I thought that the, the original prosecutor was going to show up Monday. But lo and behold, she did not show up. I guess she was still out of town or however God orchestrated it. She still didn't show up. So that whole day, we in prep. So even that Monday, um, no decision is made and the judge is really getting agitated. And she en enacted something called uh, the, Alford, the Alford Law where it basically um, only a judge can enforce it. It, pro it provokes the jury in a way to force them to make a decision. And she was stating all the parameters to the spokesperson that was the lead spokesperson for the jury. After she enacted that, she enacted that early Monday morning, all throughout the day. Every time the lady come out, she'll say, no, 
We ain't reached a decision. It's locked. Um, this was good. So, and then the judge was even saying that there's no way that this case is going to be dismissed. So we really went in the and my wife separately, as we were sitting in there listening to everything, we we started under our breath praying in tongue also. So about 540, 550, they came out and they said, we can't reach a decision. So she handed the judge and the judge was saying, I never seen this happen. After she said that, a few minutes later, she said, I don't want to do this, but I have no other choice. This case has to be dismissed. Oh, and we praised God and there we shouted and there. I know they were looking at us like we was crazy, but we were used to it all week. The people in the courtroom were looking at us like we was crazy. Um, imagine a group of people just in the hallway praying and we not whispering praying, we praying. We issuing decrees as we pray. Um, but God is good and his word is true and we, we locked in our faith and we battled with the word of God. And I made sure I told um, my small group member, member after this, I said, you let your public defenders know that they didn't defend you. It was Jesus and his word that stood as your defense. So I just want to thank God um, for even allowing us to practice out um, loving our brethren and being there for our brethren. So in this particular situation, this has shown me um, as Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loveth at all time and a brother is born in adversity. This is the whole essence of a small group to be there for your brother when the chips is down. A friend that be there that loveth at all time. I'm going to love you when you up. I'm going to love you and extend my hand to you when you down. And I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to stand with you till you're able to stand on your own and hold your hand. And this is the whole essence of small group. You really cannot do this Christian faith just being alone. You have to have others with you. It, I would just be thinking sometimes like, what if, what if we didn't come there with him? What if we said, oh, we already paid for a trip with our family where we already fulfilled what we said we was going to do to him, but that wasn't our all. That wasn't all we could do. That wasn't all that we could give for him. Especially someone that was looking at the situation from a natural point of view. And I just thank God for giving us the, the um, opportunity to sow a seed of love, to sow a seed of bearing someone else's burden, just to sow a seed of showing someone that I got you and I'm there for you. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor Steve, for just equipping us with God's word and equipping us with the tools that we needed to shepherd after God's people. He stressed us over and over, week in and week out. And even every Sunday night, he meet with us small group leaders and he put emphasis on and train us how to shepherd God's people. Any questions that we have, any problems that we're having with our small group, he give us the solution and he pointed it back Everything he points back is pointed back to God's word and what Jesus has said in his word. And I just thank him. And I see the value of this because of where we at as a church. This city is given to us and more people are coming in. So that means that more shepherds are going to need to to govern the people, to help them, to raise them, to help them be disciples of Christ that are able to stand. So just thank you, sir, for your faithfulness to your calling faithfulness to God and his word, faithfulness to God's people. And if you're not in a small group, I just want to encourage you to join a small group. Um, join being a part of raising God's people. Um, one thing God said in his word at Hebrews 6, he says that this is how I know that you love me, by you watching after my people. So I just want to, if you haven't joined a small group, you're missing out. Not just on rewards in this earth that you can see with your natural eyes, but you're missing out on rewards eternally that will speak for you forever in heaven. So join a small group and it don't matter if you do not know what you're doing. When I first started, I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know my left from right. But hey, look, today I did it. I started and that's why I'm able to even give you a testimony 
of what God has been doing in my small group. So don't do life alone. Join the small group today after service. <laughs>